Switzerland is a country in Central Europe bordering France to the west, Germany to the north, Austria and Liechtenstein to the east, as well as Italy to the south. With a total area of 41,285 square kilometers, Switzerland isn't really big at all. In fact, it is the world's 132nd largest country, right before Bhutan and after the Netherlands. The country that is famous for its watches, cheese and bunkers has a population of little more than 8.5 million. The largest cities are Zurich with 420,000 inhabitants, 1.3 million inhabitants if you consider the outskirts of Zurich, Geneva with 200,000 and Basel with 173,000 inhabitants. Bern, Switzerland's capital city, hosts 134,000 residents. For each of these cities I have uploaded a dedicated video introducing these cities in more detail. Both Zurich and Basel are in the top 10 of the world's cities by highest quality of life. This is for sure one of the most significant upsides of moving to Switzerland, but there are more that I'll be about to review. As you might know, Switzerland has four official languages. German is spoken in the northeast of Switzerland. Actually, people speak Swiss German, which is a dialect of German, but there is no official Swiss German dictionary and every canton has its own slightly different version of Swiss German. In Switzerland's western part, people speak French and in the south, people speak Italian. Romansh is spoken in the region of the Swiss Alps and is one of the descendant languages of the spoken Latin language of the Roman Empire. Unfortunately, there are only 60,000 people speaking this language. About 35% of the Swiss population is Catholic, 23% is Protestant, 6% other Christians, 5% Muslim and 26.3% are non-denominational. In Switzerland, people pay in Swiss francs. 1 euro is equivalent to 1.08 Swiss francs. 1 dollar, 2.95 Swiss francs. Switzerland has one of the world's most diverse and developed economy. Just in Zurich and its metropolitan area, there are 150,000 companies registered and together with banks like UBS and Credit Suisse, Zurich is one of the most important economic centers in the world. Furthermore, the city of Geneva hosts, together with New York City, the most international organizations worldwide. Some examples are the United Nations Organization, the World Health, Trade, Intellectual Property and Migration Organization. In Basel, Roche and Novartis, two of the world's largest pharma companies are headquartered. I cover the cost of living in Switzerland later on in this video. The geographic position of Switzerland is a significant factor why Switzerland today is one of the world's best developed countries. It heavily profits from the fact that it borders influential countries in Europe, Germany, France, Italy and Austria. However, at least in the past, those countries fought dramatic wars, which is the reason why Switzerland has, compared to its population, a relatively strong and developed military. And that's also why throughout its history, Switzerland has invested billions of Swiss francs in building cutting-edge bunkers. All bunkers combined easily have enough capacity for all people living in Switzerland. Switzerland is neither part of the European Union nor part of NATO. Later in this video there will be an interview with Erika from the YouTube channel Our Swiss Adventure. She originally is from Latvia but has lived in the UK for some time and moved to the French speaking part of Switzerland in January 2020. Erika will talk about her journey as well as provide useful tips to people who may consider moving to Switzerland. Thank you Nitin for proposing this video. If you have an idea which country I should cover next, please let me know down in the comments. This video is part of a video series that covers informative facts and the migration procedure of Switzerland, Germany, the USA, Russia, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, France, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Indonesia, India, Israel, Thailand, South Africa, Turkey, Japan, Singapore, the Netherlands, Austria, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Denmark, Belgium, China, Brazil and Ireland. I've created a dedicated video for every country mentioned. The playlist is linked in the video description as well as in the comments. Maybe I've already added some more countries including your home country, so please make sure to check out the playlist. But let's return to Switzerland. What are the main advantages of moving to Switzerland? And what needs to be considered? As of the 2015 UN report, Switzerland ranks 26th among the countries with the largest foreign-born population, ahead of the Ivory Coast and right after Malaysia. About 2.4 million people living in Switzerland were not born here, but moved to this country during their lifetime. The biggest foreign population are the Italians with 317,000 residents, the Germans with 304,000, the Portuguese with 266,000 and the French with 313,000 people moving in. In terms of percentage of foreign-born population to total population, Switzerland ranks 30 
27th with 28.9%, meaning that 28.9% of the total Swiss population was born abroad. In this statistic, Switzerland is heading Bermuda, a British overseas territory, with 29.8% and is followed by Palau with 27.8%. But what are the advantages of moving to Switzerland? As mentioned before, Switzerland is a champion when it comes to quality of life. People value low criminality rates and the fact that every European country is in close travel distance. Therefore, you can schedule spontaneous holiday trips in order to explore different European cultures without having to travel thousands of kilometers. Another big advantage of Switzerland is its political neutrality, political stability and direct democracy. Unlike in other democracies, every Swiss citizen has the ability to start a so-called people's referendum. If 100,000 signatures can be collected within 18 months, all Swiss citizens will be able to vote for that initiative and, if accepted, the new law gets implemented. For instance, in the year of 2001, an initiative was launched asking the Swiss if they want to join the European Union. The clear majority voted against this initiative. The Swiss could also vote on whether they should buy new fighter jets. However, sometimes some silly initiatives appear, for instance, whether farmers who don't cut off the horns of their cows should be financially supported by the state. Another upside are the high salaries that workers in Switzerland earn. On average, the Swiss earn 71,400 euros or almost 81,000 US dollars per year. This makes Switzerland rank fourth worldwide. The median income in Switzerland is at 41,400 euros or almost 47,000 US dollars. Only Norway and Luxembourg have a higher median income. With a median wealth of 258,158 euros or about 292,000 US dollars, Switzerland ranks first among all countries worldwide in terms of median wealth per person. Speaking about finances, you may know that living in Switzerland may cost you a fortune. If you live of 2,000 euros per month in Paris, you will need almost 2,900 euros per month to enjoy the same standard of living in Zurich. This means that the cost of living in Zurich is 45% higher than the cost of living in Paris. That's why plenty of people work in Switzerland while they live just across the border. That's not a bad deal at all, especially if you live in France, work in Switzerland and go shopping in Germany. That really pays off. A two-bedroom apartment in the city of Zurich can quickly cost up to 2,500 euros or more than 2,800 US dollars per month. But as mentioned, thanks to the high salaries and the relatively low income tax, it financially makes sense to live and work in Switzerland. Apart from finances, nature is an additional advantage. There are lots of rivers and lakes and the world-famous Swiss Alps are in very close driving distance. In the International PISA Education Comparison of 2015, Switzerland ranks 15th of 71 participating countries. Given Switzerland's financial resources, in my opinion, Switzerland could spend more on education in order to catch up with other countries. But besides all these advantages, there are also some drawbacks when it comes to moving to Switzerland. The Swiss are known for not being too welcoming and for taking their time before they consider you as a friend. Not speaking Swiss German makes building up relationships harder. Nevertheless, there are huge international communities in Switzerland, where one can meet people from all around the world. The Swiss even surpass the German when it comes to following rules and establishing order. Let's continue with interviewing Erika. Erika, when did you move to Switzerland and which city did you move to? We moved to Switzerland in January this year to the city of Nuschta, so we have been here for only about five months. Why Switzerland and not another country in Europe? My boyfriend was looking for a job outside of the UK and an offer in Nuschta came up, so he decided to apply and eventually he got it. We knew that Switzerland is supposed to be beautiful, so I thought it would be an interesting experience to live here for a bit, have an adventure, explore the local sites. And plus, Nuschtel is in the French-speaking part of Switzerland, which worked well for us since we both already spoke a bit of French. What do you enjoy the most in Switzerland? <laughs> Definitely the mountain views. As uh, stereotypical as it is, the nature in Switzerland is just beautiful. And because of this, everyone seems to be very, very active. They go hiking, they go biking, running outdoors, and it also motivates you to be more active, which is great. Because before we were living in Cambridge in the UK, which is a very flat area, so for us it's a definite change of scenery and it's very exciting. What do you miss the most about the UK? Um, I think I miss the most of food, but not specifically British food. You see, in the UK there's a great selection of authentic food from all over the world, both in the forms of restaurants and shops selling the ingredients, Korean, Vietnamese, Indian, Polish, anything you want really, you can get it there. However, unfortunately in Switzerland the offer is not as varied and people don't seem to be as adventurous in their taste. 
and it also doesn't help that we live in quite a small city, so there are not as many restaurants here. Was it hard for you to learn French? Both me and my boyfriend already knew some French before we came here, but we both started language courses as soon as we arrived here. I would definitely recommend to learn the language of the area that you'll be living in. Um, a lot of our interactions with governmental institutions in the banks, shops, cafes, it all had to be in French, as not everyone here speaks English. And as for German, I don't speak any at all, uh, which is fine when we live here. But if we were to move to a German-speaking part, or if I tried to find a job there, that would definitely be an issue because German is really needed there. What tips would you give people who are interested in moving to Switzerland? So, first tip I have is do lots of research. Read about the country and its specific quirks, because it has quite a lot of them. Upon your arrival, you have to do a lot of paperwork to set yourself up in Switzerland. So you want to be as prepared for it as possible to minimize the stress. Second tip is, because of all this paperwork that I just mentioned, be prepared for things to take a long time to get sorted and set up. A lot of processes and applications are managed by post, so by letters, and you can find yourself waiting weeks for a decision on your permit to be sent to you by post or for another insurance form to be sent to you and it's just the way it works here so don't be discouraged by that it's just Switzerland. <laughs> and the last tip is bring some hiking boots or a bike because as soon as you move here you will want to explore the surroundings and join the active Swiss folk. If you could decide again would you still move to Switzerland? It's a difficult question to answer, but I think we would still move here. Everyone's experience is different, but from what we've seen so far, the Swiss government is not making things easy for the foreigners wishing to move here. As a result, there's a lot of hurdles that you have to jump over in order to get a residence permit, especially if you don't have a job here already, which was what happened in my case. Despite all that, about 25% of people living in Switzerland are foreign nationals, so it's not impossible to settle down here. It'll just probably be a bit more complicated and just different from other countries in Europe. Thanks Erika for taking time to join this interview. Please make sure to check out her channel linked in the description below for more informative videos about her life in Switzerland. What needs to be done in order to move to Switzerland? For residents of a country that is part of the European Union or for residents of Iceland, Norway, Liechtenstein, Canada and the USA, there is no visa required to visit Switzerland for a maximum time of three months. During these three months, you are not permitted to work. Residents of other countries need to apply for a visa in order to visit Switzerland. The first time you apply for a residence permit in Switzerland, you will receive either a permit B or a permit L. They are both issued for one year initially, but the permit B can be renewed annually, whereas permit L can only be renewed once. Citizens from the European Union and countries mentioned previously can get a Swiss permanent residence permit after living in Switzerland for five continuous years with the B permit. Citizens from remaining countries must have been living in Switzerland with a B permit for 10 continuous years before they can apply for a Swiss permit C. As a general rule, in order to be eligible for the Swiss permit C, you will have to prove that you are sufficient integrated in Swiss culture and that you can speak the official language in the canton in which you live in. You need to demonstrate a level A2 in oral language skills and A1 in written language skills. You will need to take a language proficiency test to prove this. Other requirements include proof of a clean criminal record from the Swiss police, proof you have no debt in any place you have lived in while in Switzerland, a record of employment and proof you have not received any social benefits. Foreigners with no direct blood ties to Switzerland through either birth or marriage must live in the country for at least 10 years before they can apply for the Swiss citizenship. Years spent in the country between the age of 8 and 18 count double. Also, being fluent in one of Switzerland's national languages, as well as passing an exam that tests knowledge of Swiss history, traditions and political structure are requirements. I hope that I could provide useful information about the Swiss country and about the process of migrating to it. Please let me know which country I should cover next. And don't forget to check out the playlist where you will find more videos targeting other countries around the globe. Thanks for watching.